Hi, it's Liz Nenon here. Let's have a look at discrete random variables explained. So hopefully I can give you a bit more explanation this one. So the first thing I want to start with is what are linear combinations? So here's a couple of examples that I'm going to try and use to explain what I mean and what, we, what they are. So if I go out to dinner, I know roughly if I'm going to go to fast food restaurants, I'll spend about $10, get myself a combo. So chips, burger, drink, um, or um, that kind of thing. And I'm going to call that distribution of how much money, doesn't matter whether I go to Wendy's or, or Burger Fuel or Burger King or all of those, it's around about a similar amount of money. So I'm going to call that distribution of money M. That's the amount of money for one meal. Now, if I go out on a public holiday, then there's always a surcharge. So I take whatever this amount M is, and I need to multiply that. I need to increase how much money I'm going to spend. And in this case, I'm going to increase it by 15%. So that's what I'm doing, is I'm taking my distribution M, which is the amount of money that I would be spending, and I'm multiplying it by a constant. Another example is if I want to add a co coffee to my meal, then that's usually about five dollars more. So whatever that cost of my meal is, I'm adding another five dollars on top of that cost. So that's when I would add a constant amount to something. So this is the idea behind it, is that we have data, we have information, probability information about a particular thing, and now I'm giving you some more information and we're having to modify and change this distribution. Let's actually have a look at a couple of real examples here. So what we've got is I've got a distribution here, and it's a very simple one. Um, there are three outcomes, getting a zero, getting a one, getting a two. Each of these have a probability, and I've written those probabilities on the bars. So the probability of getting a zero is 0.4. Probability of getting one is 0.5. Probability of two is 0.1. So I want you to think, well, what happens if I was going to multiply these values by two? Similar to that example before of adding a surcharge of 15%, what if I'm doubling my prices? So what if I'm doubling these money? So if I take my data values, my 0, my 1, and my 2, I need to multiply each of those by 2. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Well, 0 times 2 is just 0. So that's actually... That whole bar is just going to stay exactly where it already is and the probability is not going to change all I'm doing is changing the money I'm doubling that amount of that doubling that value now what if I multiply one by two well one times two is two so this whole bar here of 0 0.5 I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to move that across to here because that's now been located there and so that's going to be a probability of 0 0.5 the probability I had at, of 0 0.1 with a value of 2, well 2 times 2 is 4. So at my value of 4, I'm going to pick up and I'm going to move that little bar across to be sitting here at 4. So what I've just done is, because I've multiplied my values by this constant number, the bottom ones stay where it is, but the top ones have got more spread out. So let's just have a look and think more specifically now about what the mean in the standard deviation might be doing. So if I look, I've got them just showing in the two graphs, one above, one below. So this top one is the one where I've done two times my distribution. And this is my just my distribution down here. Okay, the original. So with the original one, the mean, the middle, is going to be somewhere around the value of 1. Somewhere in here <clears throat> is going to be where our middle is. Okay, maybe even a little bit below. Somewhere around the middle there. Okay, now let's think about, well, what is the mean going to be on my linear combination distribution? So this 2 times distribution. Well, the middle bar is moved up, so our mean is going to be still going to be somewhere in that kind of range there. So our mean has 
doubled if it if our mean was at one now that's doubled to two if it was just under one it's doubled if it's just over one it's doubled so our mean has doubled what it was and that's the same constant that we've multiplied the distribution by okay now let's think now about the standard deviation what's happened with that well let's just take think about spread I'm not going to think standard deviation specifically, let's think about spread in general. So if I just take the overall spread, the range, biggest minus the smallest, then for my original distribution, we had a spread going from 0 up to 2. So that was, that was how spread out our data was. Now with our modified distribution, our spread, that range, has changed a lot. It's got a lot more spread out. So it's had quite a significant effect. Um, so what this leads to, and these, this is a simplified version of the full formula, is if I multiply by a particular constant, so if I say 2 times my distribution, okay, then what I'm doing to the mean is I'm saying, well, 2 times the old mean is going to be my new mean. Okay, so whatever I've multiplied, whatever constant I've used, I'm just multiplying that, and that's how much the mean ch changes by. Okay, so our mean went from 1 up to 2, just doubled. Our variation, though, has changed a lot more. The data got a lot more spread out there. And, in fact, exactly how much it's changed, well, whatever that factor there was, we square that factor, and that's exactly how much our variation has changed. So let's look at a slightly different variation on that again. What happens if I go back to the original one, point of 0, 1, 2, there's my data. What happens if I was just going to add 1 to those values? So I'm going to take my value at 0, and I'm going to add 1 to that. So I'm going to pick up this whole box here. And I'm going to shift that over, and that's now going to be sitting here. Then I'm going to add 1 to that value of 1, and so I'm going to pick up that box that's there, and that's going to shift over here, because I've moved it across 1, so I've moved that box across. And then I add 1 to 2, and I'm going to pick up that little box there, and I'm going to move that across, and that's now sitting there at 3. So I've just picked things up and moved things along, so adding 1, I'm just shifting them over. So here's my graph where I've kind of got them both so we can see. So this was the one down here, this was my original distribution, and the top one is my distribution plus one. So let's think about what's happened with the means. Well, the bottom one, the original one, our means still round about there somewhere in the middle, about one-ish. And we've added one to that, so when we've moved it, the new one, that's just picked it up and moved it up by 1. So that's not so bad. So the mean has just added 1 to that. But now let's think about the spread. How spread out is our data? Well, originally our data went from 0 up to 2. And now our spread of our data is from 1 to 3. So has the spread of the data changed? And the answer is no, it hasn't. We've just picked up the distribution and shifted the distribution along. I'm adding another coffee for $5. I'm just adding a constant amount. I'm not changing how spread out the data is, but I am adding another $5 to my center or my mean. So in terms of the formula, what that means is if I add a constant amount to my distribution, then I'm going to add a constant amount to the mean as well. But if I add a constant amount in the variation, that doesn't do anything to the overall variation. It doesn't change it at all because I've just the variation, the spread of the data is the same. So if I put all of th those two bits together, if I put that multiplying by a constant and adding a constant bit together, then in terms of my mean, I multiply by whatever the, a constant may or may not be, and I'm going to add or subtract whatever a constant may or may not be. For the variation, whatever I multiply, I'm going to square that constant 
Now, whatever I add or subtract, that's not going to do anything to my overall variance. So I hope that these images have kind of given you a little bit more of an idea of adding or subtracting an amount to a distribution just picks it up and shifts it along. So the mean just goes up or down by that amount. The variation doesn't change. That stays the same. But if I'm multiplying by a constant, the data becomes a lot more spread out as well as the mean changing. And so what the formula is doing is identifying exactly what the new mean and standard deviation will be given that we want to combine it in these types of ways. So I want, might want to multiply by a constant because my cost is changing. I might want to add a constant amount because I'm buying a coffee. So I've got some data on a distribution that is being combined together in some linear way in order to create this new amount. Hope that helps guys.